Hey everybody, welcome. Today we are going to be reading Calico Bush by Rachel Field, Maple Point. Wherever you go in the state of Maine, you'll come across some old French strain, a scarlet thread in the sober skein of later settlers since first Champlain. Charted those islands of the sea in the name of France and the fleur-de-lis. Changed, misspelled, and lost, perhaps. You can find some yet if you search the maps. A scattered handful of six or so with Mount Desert and Isle Aho. Those lilies of France were far too frail for the bitter winters of the Northeast Gale. The sharp toothed ledges, the icy tides, the bristling spruce on the mountain sides. For a land that secures a needy tree can be less kind to a fleur de lis. It's years now since they were broken and lost. Sturdier stock has weathered the frost, but here and there in some far place, the name persists on a foreign face. A lift of shoulder, a turn of head, along with an old world chest or bed. A bread and Bible, a silver spoon, a feet more quick to a fiddle tune. A gift for taking the last mad chance because some great great came from France. These are the facts and precious few of the certain Marguerite de Lou a bound out girl thirteen or so, to Dolly Sargent and her man Joe, and their brood of children born and bred, now the pleasant port of Marblehead. No one will, knows what sent them forth, picking a course past east part north, in, in, in an open sloop as like as not, piled with whatever goods they've got. And no one knows, or ever will, how they built that chimney rough and dorsal, laid on the roof and stuffed each kink, and deep in the spring that they might drink. Settlers make mention of births and dying, but for the rest there's no use trying. It's the same long round in sun and rain, sun up to sun down and over again. Trees must be fell felled and chips set flying. Fires must burn and pans kept frying. There's wool to be sheared and spun by hand and crops wrung somehow from half cleared land. Winters of sleet and storm by night Northern summers too brief and bright. A fight for bare necessities. Yes, Margaret knew all of these. But she's a legend nonetheless, a flowering sprig in the wilderness. A name blown out of years ago, a sprightly phantom in calico. This is her story and this is why I think of her when tides run high. On rocky ledges when some wild bird calls with a note she may have heard. When berries ripen in marshy ground, bright as the one she must have found, in other seasons of sun and rain on the island scattered coast of Maine. Thanks. We'll read the next chapter and the next video.